Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for October 1st, 2021. It's the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny little computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you'd like to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday, uh, such as next week, we will recognize Indigenous Peoples Day and move the meeting to Tuesday at the same time of day, so 24 hours later. The best way to be notified about changes to the meeting is subscribing to a calendar that is available um, on GitHub, and I believe the link is also in the meeting doc. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. This meeting uh, will be posted on YouTube and the audio only version will be released as a podcast. And Carter, I think we're getting a little feedback from you. Uh, so if we're not on your favorite podcast service, do let us know. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. If you're watching us on YouTube, the link is just down below. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, this is where you leave your hug reports and status updates in advance and we'll read them off during the meeting. I'll also be adding timestamps to the notes document, so if you're watching it after the fact, it will help you skip to the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so it's great to have the option to skip around. Uh, before the meeting, we post the link to the next meeting notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. The best way to find it is to check the pinned messages and follow the link to GitHub or to, uh, to Google Docs. All right, the structure of the meeting has five parts. Next up is community news, where we get a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter, a sampling of things that are going on with CircuitPython and Python on hardware. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, where we take a statistical overview of the entire project. The first participatory round robin is called Hug Reports an opportunity to highlight the good things the folks around us are doing and take the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The second round robin is called Status Updates. We invite you to take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've done since you had time to join us in a meeting and what we'll be up to in the next week or until the next meeting you can join us. And then the last part is called In the Weeds. If there is a need for a longer term discussion, this is where we uh, are gonna do it. Please add the topic to the notes document as soon as you have identified it, whether that's a week in advance or during someone's status update, including your own. And that covers the major parts of the meeting. So I will click over to our notes document uh, and tell you about a few headlines and a few projects from the CircuitPython newsletter coming out tomorrow. First off, and this reflects my, uh, my priorities. I'm really excited that Hacktoberfest begins October 1st. Hosted by DigitalOcean for the eighth year in a row, Hacktoberfest encourages participation and giving back to the open source community by completing pull requests, participating in events, and donating to, donating to open source projects. Anyone around the globe who wants to help drive the growth of open source and make positive contributions to an ever-growing community. All backgrounds and skill levels are encouraged to participate. The first 55,000 participants can earn a t-shirt and there are links to DigitalOcean and it is also via Twitter. So uh, here in CircuitPython, I think we will hear more about this later, but we are actively participating in Hacktoberfest. We have tagged a bunch of good first issues and we will be actively reviewing them, merging them, and marking them as uh, Hacktoberfest accepted. So more about that later in the meeting. Next up, a lovely piece of hardware, the Blues Wireless Swan in the uh, Feather compatible form factor. And there are some links to Twitter. And uh, let's see, the highlights of this board are 120 megahertz STM32 microcontroller, 
with 2 megs of flash and 640 kilobytes of RAM, um, a bunch of um, I.O. pins that you can use that are kind of in between the regular feather pins, and yeah, other stuff. So next up, and I picked this one, full disclosure, because it's a project by a friend of mine. It's called Octomatrix Portal. It lets you see the status of your Octoprint 3D printer on an Adafruit Matrix portal. And that is, of course, programmed in CircuitPython. And last up, outside of the CircuitPython world, building a GPS data logger for an electric bike with MicroPython. Links to Design Park and Twitter. The CircuitPython weekly newsletter has a lot more than this. And it is a uh, community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. And we always seek to highlight the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. We really want you to contribute your news or project, and you can do it in a number of ways. You can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And as always, a big hug report to Anne for uh, doing the great work that she does to bring us this newsletter every week. Um, next section, the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, the core of this section is statistics gathered from GitHub about our activity over the last seven days and uh, we break it down into several subsections. But I will start with the overall numbers. For the last seven days, we had 19 pull requests merged from 13 authors and nine reviewers. And there were a bunch of author names that were unfamiliar to me, so I will read them off. We have Earth Prelude, M. Lupo, Flantastic Dan, Pontus O, and FE7N, who have um, recently been authors of merged pull requests. So thank you very much to them uh, if you're just first dipping your toes in. And of course, thank you to our regular contributors and uh, people that we see all the time. Issues wise, we closed 18 issues and we had 298 issues opened by 13 people. So that's obviously a big um, net increase in issues, but it's all for a good reason. It doesn't indicate that we have huge problems it indicates that we have huge opportunities, and in particular, a lot of Hectoberfest um, opportunities. And with that, I will hand it off to uh, Dan to tell us about what is up in the core. Okay, thank you, Jeff. So I'm talking about the CircuitPython core, um, which is the Adafruit CircuitPython repo. Last week, we had seven pull requests that were merged five authors and four reviewers. Pontus O, as Jeff mentioned, is a new contributor of a pull request to the core. Uh, we closed six issues, but we opened 13 new issues. That's fine. People are beginning to discover issues with uh, the 7.0 release. Uh, we've assigned the Hacktoberfest label to 23 issues. So if you'd like to do some nice, small, self-contained project, please take a look at those issues. We'd be grateful. There are 431 open issues right now. Um, of those, a bunch are long-term. There are 17 open for 7XX release. We'll probably do a 7.1 release in the not too distant future, adding a few features and fixing some problems. Um, I would say the number of issues is kind of stable. Uh, so take a look at those Hacktoberfest issues and see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dan. And next, I'll hand the talking stick to Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as the Cir Adafruit CircuitPython bundle and the community bundle, and I believe our cookie cutter repo. So across all those libraries this week, we had 11 pull requests merged from seven different authors and seven different reviewers, leaving us with 57 open pull requests. We had 12 issues closed by seven people and an exciting 282 open by two people. Uh, and the 
lovely thing there is um, we assigned Hacktoberfest label to 283 issues. And I believe uh, something like 280 of those are new. So uh, early hug report to Foamy Guy for that. I will be giving another hug report to Foamy Guy for that later. Um, so that leaves us with 624 open issues and 285 good first issues. If you're looking to contribute to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list of open pull requests, a list of open issues, and some library infrastructure issues. Um, you can search the issues by label. If you're new to all of this, check out Good First Issue. We just created many of them. And uh, there's an explanation in those issues on how to complete them. And we are absolutely available to help you with any questions you have along the way. There is a guide on uh, contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub that explains a pretty standard workflow for using both um, to contribute to open source. And uh, it's, it's our standard workflow. So um, take a look at that if you're new. And um, feel free to ping us with any questions. And we are always available on uh, Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash Discord. Or um, if you reply to the GitHub issue, we can also assist you there. Uh, we in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, Adafruit Circuit Python Radial Controller and a few updated libraries that I will not, um, that I will not uh, read off. So overall, we're heading into Hacktoberfest with a massive number of good first issues. This also means that there may be a number of folks looking for help with PRs and so on over the next four weeks. If you're a member of the review team, please keep an eye out for these issues and PRs. If you are not a member of the review team and you'd like to help out, do the same and feel free to comment on either uh, the, the issues or the PRs as folks are uh, requesting assistance. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you. And to round out the section, uh, Melissa will tell us about Blinka. Hello, Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. There are four open pull requests. I think uh, one of those is my mine, so I'm kind of waiting on somebody else to look at it. Uh, let's see, there were zero open or zero closed issues by zero people and three open by three people, and uh, there are zero issues with the Hacktoberfest label assigned, and we currently have uh, 65 open issues. There were 9,904 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 76 boards. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Next up is Hug Reports. As I mentioned earlier, it is an opportunity for us to recognize the great stuff that the people around us are doing, and an anecdote, or an, an antidote, pardon me, to uh, the normal way of just talking about bug reports. So I will start it off, and then we'll proceed in alphabetical order. And uh, when we come to you, open up your mic and speak, or if I need to read it out, um, note that in the notes document. So I will start off with a group hug, and a hug for all the community moderators who are dealing with a slow but steady stream of spammers. It's real easy to delete the message and ban the person who posted it, um, but you know, we don't like that people have to see that stuff. And so thanks for everyone uh, who steps up and deals with it promptly when it happens. And a hug to all those who are about to join us during Hacktoberfest to make CircuitPython and the libraries better. And finally, a hug in anticipation of Dan doing some of the Discord meetings, which we were discussing earlier. And with that, I will pass it to Katni. All right, uh, so first up, I have another hug for Foamy Guy. Uh, for creating basically all of our good first issues. Um, getting that set up uh, was something that I put out a call for leading into Hacktoberfest uh, because we always have folks who want to participate, but we don't always have the opportunity to um, provide things that new folks can participate with. So um, Foamy Guy came up with a particular thing that a lot of the libraries need uh, that will make things easier to work with um, the libraries in different uh, IDEs and so on. 
um, and something we've wanted to do for a while and put it put together a very specific explanation on how to do it um, in each issue and was able to file all those issues and get that going. So we are prepared. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for that. Um, thank you to maker Melissa for helping me out with some guide feedback. Uh, thank you to Dan for looking into an issue filed on the Fritzing repo about a pin name and suggesting the issue author submit a PR with the fix. Um, to that end, uh, a hug report to Owen H000 on GitHub for submitting a PR to the Adafruit Fritzing library repo to fix a pin name on the Feather RP2040 pin or RP2040 Fritzing object. And finally, um, a hug report to Crayola for all the effort put in to make the IS31FL 3741 work with the LED animation library. That's what I got. Thanks. Uh, next up is Melissa, and then we'll head to the top of the alphabet. I just wanted to give a group hug to everyone. All right. Thank you. I have some hug reports from Anecdata, who um, has a hug for Dan and me for help with keypad usage and also with design concepts in the core for buffering data. And a hug to MicroDev1 for collaborating on shared bindings and development work on the monitor mode API. And then I have notes from Charles Burniford, who is lurking, but sends a group hug. And next up is Dan. OK, uh, thanks to uh, CPT Iglo, maybe that's Captain Iglo, I'm not sure, uh, who, a uh, Discord user who was trying out the Kitty Paw keypad project and found several problems. Uh, first, I rewrote it to use keypad, which helped some things, but it turns out there's some display I.O. delays that we'll need to check into. And uh, speaking of running meetings, thanks to Katni for writing up a really wonderful uh, guide about how to run the Monday meeting which we use internally, and I'll, have, I'll rely on that extensively when I start to run meetings. Okay. All right, and last up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, this week, hugs are going out for uh, Deshipu, who shared a simplified wiring diagram with me uh, over the weekend, or I think this was Friday evening, uh, to wire up the max 7219 in an 8x8 matrix, uh, as well as uh, several other folks who tuned into the stream on Friday and helped me figure out how to map the pins on that matrix. It turned out I had kind of an odd one. Uh, and then uh, also to Carter, who made a new graphic um, that's real nice and labels all the pins that we found uh, for that matrix. Uh, so I appreciate uh, help from everyone. Thanks. All right, and that rounds out Hug Reports. We head next to status updates, where we want to hear about what you've been up to, what you hope to do, a little about any trouble that you're facing, and then, of course, a little humorous anecdote or something that you're doing outside of CircuitPython is always welcome. I will lead off once again. Last week, uh, I wrote and we published on the Learn System a BLE thermal printer guide, so you can print out uh, bitmapped images using a board like the Adafruit Clue with a specific um, BLE thermal printer that is styled to look like it has a cat face on it, which is the main reason I did the project. Um, and then on Thursday and Friday, I started on a new library to support the OV5640 camera module. Um, that's still a work in progress, but hopefully uh, this week, when I continue working on it, I will get it to the point where it is going with CircuitPython. And uh, with the cat printer, I plan to continue on with a text label printing program but that is, for me, that's not on Adafruit time, so it is not likely to become a guide. It might appear on my, uh, my blog. You never know. Uh, anyway, and if anybody is interested in trying out this particular camera module, I put a link to an Amazon listing, and the best board to use it with is the Espressive Kaluga dev kit because it has a compatible connector built right in. And you can also run it with an example from Espressive rather than with CircuitPython. So you can verify that it's working. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's what I will be up to. And alphabetically next is Katni. All right, so I have an exceedingly short list this week. Um, the things I was doing were, were a bit involved. Uh, so I published the proximity trinky guide. Um, that's the last, I believe, of our trinky family. Uh, it's got a, a sensor, the APDS9960, I think. 
on it, which is a proximity color gesture and light sensor, I believe. Um, it does proximity best. Uh, so we did, um, there's a couple examples in there that use that, including one to play the Chrome Dino game, which if you've ever used Chrome when you don't have network connectivity, you'll be aware of this. But if you've always had network connectivity, you may not be aware of it. Um, it's basically a side scroller where you hit the space bar to jump over obstacles and you're, you're a dinosaur. Um, completely random, but uh, we put that together and I was actually able to uh, play it relatively well with the, with the Trinky. So it's, um, it's usable. Um, anyway, I finished the ANO rotary encoder guide and that's now awaiting moderation. Um, that's a large clicky directional navigation rotary encoder with five buttons uh, that we made a breakout for. And there's a fairly simple example that shows a um, LED on a NeoPixel ring do things based on the um, encoder buttons and encoder itself. Um, so that should be out soon. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. So if you picked one up, um, that'll be in there and that'll have all the information about the breakout and so on as well. So this week, I'm working on the LED glasses guide uh, with Bill B. And um, that'll get started this week. And then uh, once that's done, I'll be doing the breakout for the eight, the new eight, or doing the guide for the new AT Tiny breakout, uh, which is not, it's in the shop coming soon. Um, and it will be coming soon. And then any various miscellaneous things that come up. And that's what I've got going on. All right. Just a few items, but there's a lot behind it all. And next up, Maker Melissa. Hi, let's see here. I lost my place in the document. Uh, okay, let's see. Last week I finished up my Rotary Animated GIF Player Guide. And I got back into the JavaScript stuff and have been making good progress in updating the JavaScript BLE file transfer library. And this week I'm going to work on finishing updating that library and then I'll implement some file related features into the CircuitPython code editor. And that's it. All right, thank you. And at the top of the alphabet, we have Dan. OK. Um, last week, toward the end of last week, I, I wrote a, a guide about building custom HID devices in CircuitPython. It has two examples. One is Jeff's uh, N key rollover example, which we're just moving from the previous customizing USB devices guide. And the other is a, a new page I wrote about um, trying to emulate partially the Microsoft Surface dial, which is what is called a radial controller. So that's what Microsoft calls it. And there's some introductory matter there too. So that guide is published. It doesn't give you all the gory details. Uh, how to write USB report descriptors is very complicated and it's far larger than we can cover in a guide. Um, now I'm working on boot keyboard support. Um, that's sort of like half done. That means that you'll be able to use CircuitPython boards to talk to things like BIOSes that don't have regular keyboard support. Um, as I mentioned, there's a problem uh, with the keypad, with the uh, paw, ki kitty key paw uh, project, which the problem is that display IO is doing a lot of work in the background and it causes USB messages to be delayed. And in particular, uh, if there's a key down message, it might be like half a second before the key up message uh, goes through. And that means that the operating system uh, helpfully starts doing auto repeat, which is pretty bad if you're just trying to type a key once. So uh, when Scott returns, I will talk to him about that. And we're getting reports of bugs to fix for 7xx, and I'm triaging those and um, making sure that we do take look take a look at the ones that look like they like we need to fix them. OK. Thank you, Dan. And once again, rounding out the select, the section is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, last week, I got an 8x8 LED matrix wired up. It's the uh, first of our typing information PRs on the Mac 7219 driver. Um, I started working on a proof of concept for kind of like a way to split out display uh, setup from the rest of scripts, the rest of a, an example script, for instance. Because uh, I noticed on 
Blink at Display I.O., it's kind of tough to share code around between different folks who have different displays because you end up having to cut chunks out and uh, replace it with your own setup. So I'm trying to make that as smooth as I can. Um, and uh, I finally got around this weekend to publishing a, a short video that shows folks how to use the CircuitPython stubs with PyCharm and uh, some of the kind of high-level benefits that you get from it. Um, so I can uh, point folks to that. That's a question that's come up a few times lately on the Discord. Um, this week, I need to solder up a Pico uh, to test the same Max7219 driver uh, with a, an issue that somebody brought into the Help With uh, channel last night. It's not related to the PR, but they were having some trouble getting that chip to work with a Pico, so I plan to try that out. Um, I am going to try to make some display I.O. examples for sensors. Uh, one of the things we've had a couple of folks ask for in the chat is um, how to display the output from a sensor on the screen and then just update it every time they check a new value on the sensor. Uh, and it occurred to me that lots of the simple test scripts in the driver libraries, they will just print to the REPL. Um, so I think it'd be good if we had a couple that will display onto a screen. So I'm going to try to do that. And then uh, last thing I have is a try to make an introduction to display IO. Uh, we have a great guide, but some folks just do better with, um, you know, like a video tutorial or something like that. So I'll try to make a video that covers the basic building blocks and how to put them together to achieve uh, what you want with display IO. Um, and that's what I got on the docket this week. Thanks. All right. That finishes status updates. So we will now go out in the weeds. And as I mentioned before, this is a time for longer discussion that doesn't fit within the other categories. And I've got some topics here, and I will go ahead and hand it to Foamy Guy and Anik Data for the first topic. All right. Uh, yeah, this was something that we uh, that came up over the over the weekend, and it led to the same discussion about having uh, display-based uh, examples. But really, I think this is more a, a more general uh, problem or a more general discussion. So. In, uh, in libraries, we always have an examples directory with um, you know one or more examples of the code. And we got to talking about like where would be the best place to hold a similar type of thing, but for core code. Um, there is some of that floating around in various different places, but I think it'd be great if we had one spot um, with a bunch of examples together. So some ideas that came to mind for me were making an examples directory in the core repo the same way we do in the libraries um, or making a separate repo that is like dedicated just to built-in module examples um, but i'm interested in feedback from from others and any other ideas that folks have so i oh go ahead dan oh go ahead <laughs> i was gonna say i think that the, where we have the most is in the learn system, so the Adafruit Learning Guides repo. And just to, to put my own question or, or discussion on top of this, I was thinking in the CircuitPython documentation, should we be linking more to, like, here is the main guide about bus IO, if there is a bus IO guide within the CircuitPython, read the docs. But that's we a DRAM. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> And it just, it, it's a lot of work. Okay. No. Um, so it hasn't been happening. We've discussed it though. Um, I, if, if we don't want to add a directory to the core, um, I think a new core examples repo would be a better option than learn. Because um, there won't necessarily be a learn guide about each thing. Well, that and the level of CI necessary to handle code going into the learn repo is pretty astronomical. And if it's if it's definitely not going into a learn guide, I don't think it's worth running all of that every time. So I think its own repo makes sense. And then the nice thing about that would be that I think we could probably work it um, into uh, or maybe I don't know. I don't really know how the how the examples bundle works, but if, if we can get it pulled into the examples bundle, um, that would be also convenient. Um, but it would allow for like subdirectories and, you know, so on and so forth without, without it being diluted into a huge repo, like the learn repo. Yeah, I do think some organization maybe based, uh, like organized by the module that the examples are for would be good. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, which I feel like if we tried to do that inside of the learn repo, we would just lose things. Yeah. Yeah. A reason not to do it in the core is hardly anybody clones the core. And I think the way most people get examples is like Katni was saying through the examples zip file or of course through learn. So something that can work with the example zip would be an ideal outcome. Okay. But I think so, a, a new repo probably makes the most sense. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Hello? Go ahead, yeah. Charles. Uh, I found uh, 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 CPython, you know, python.org has an example collection where you can go out and grab just the code you need for uh, to try out a new function that you're learning about. So, and that is in fact done in a separate rep, rep, repo from their main thing because otherwise it would I, I, I would probably do this. I think they have the same problem you would with Circuit Python. You pollute. Okay. You know, you'd make it. You'd make a huge increase in work. The workload to maintain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there's precedent out there. Could you yes, paste, I think there paste is. the link to that? Could you paste the link to that? And that would I'll, be really I'll try to find it again. Yeah. I had it for. A, for for a while, and then I, lo I lost it because I lost my whole computer. So I'm sort of reaccumulating all these things. Ick. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Charles. All right. Anything more to say about that? Um, no, I think we have uh, enough to get started. I'll uh, I'll reply back to Kat and here in the chat. Um, but I I think we got enough to to get going. All right. Um, well, next up, I had a section on Hacktoberfest, and I guess I want to insert first, will somebody go check whether the Hacktoberfest labels are actually placed like we thought they were, or whether Adabot just counted up how many she would like to add? Um, someone asked about it in the chat, and I earlier had looked, and I thought the labels maybe weren't there. So if somebody could take a look and verify and find out whether we need to try Adabot again. We need good to try to Adabot again. Okay. They weren't there. They weren't there two, two minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I just wanted to talk about my understanding of how to handle pull requests so that the submitters get the credit toward their um, T-shirt or tree. And of course, the canonical instructions are on Hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com. There's a page of resources for maintainers, and this is my understanding and summary of the document. So if you can promptly merge a PR or give it uh, an accepted review, you can do that and that's enough. Uh, if not, but clearly you are looking at a well-intentioned PR that may need some work, you can give them credit by adding the label Hacktoberfest accepted on the pull request. And also, of course, let the author know what work is needed before we can get it merged. If you have some a PR that is clearly not well-intentioned, you can tag it as invalid or spam and of course close it up. And then if those labels that you need are not available, you can contact someone with extra GitHub powers. That would be me, Katni, Dan, Scott, probably some others. And I think a mention on the issue may be best. Um, you could also do it on Discord and probably most of the repos have that already. The other thing I noticed is that this year for the first time, you can get your Hacktoberfest points by doing maintainer actions such as writing reviews and merging PRs. So that is exciting. If that if you do more work on the review side uh, and you aren't an official reviewer yet, that becomes a great reason to uh, get spun up right now so that you can earn a Hacktoberfest reward. Uh, and finally, I wondered whether we wanted to add Hacktoberfest as a topic to any or all of our repos. It doesn't seem to be required, but um, one way you can discover where to do Hacktoberfest work is to search GitHub by topic, and this would allow us to appear there. So that's the, that's the only thing that's a question. And of course, any corrections to what I outlined above are also welcome. Um, I think, I mean, there's probably a way through the API to label them all um, using Adabot or some such. Yeah, um, I don't think we'd want to do it manually. No. Uh, let's get the labels fixed. Yes. And then uh, we'll worry about possibly adding the topic. 
Okay. That's that's my thought. <laughs> yeah, and Katni, will you are you gonna look into the um the tag issue? Mm, yes. Okay. And you'll ping whoever you need if if uh like Adabot needs modified or something. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Yep. All right. Um so J Farcine says should it should a topic be added to Adafruit Blinka? I mean, it could be. And maybe maybe we'll do something wholesale or maybe we won't. It sounds like probably we won't do something wholesale right now. Um and if Adafruit Blinka doesn't have the tag tags go on issues and topics go on repos, it's nomenclature to, to learn. And it sounded like um Melissa didn't know whether there were any good first issues or good Hectoberfest issues in Blinka. So if there are not, that may be a reason not to mark it uh, as, as part of the topic. Well, for Blinka, it's like, I don't know what qualifies as a good Hectoberfest issue, you know? Um, I mean, shouldn't any issues qualify? Yeah, the, what the label does, it, it's a signal to maybe a more beginner person um, of whether an issue should be tackled. Ah. But because what you actually get counted for doing is filing a pull request, it doesn't actually matter. That isn't a requirement for somebody to be able to get the credit. It just is, yeah, a, is a signal. You should look at this. And so that's, I think, why we equate it with good first issue. Yeah, I think there's not much low-hanging fruit on Blink at the moment. So. I don't necessarily think that's true oh yeah um about the about it being a good first issue we did that like that was a that was an internal choice we made um there are plenty of folks who are far more um advanced who will be participating in hacktoberfest so um just don't add the good first issue label along with the hacktoberfest label and i think it's it's still an appropriate situation okay. so what about creating a um uh, just a topic over the whole uh, blink topic for the whole repo. That would be fine. Okay. That, that that would also be fine. I just I think um, don't don't feel like you have to have low hanging fruit to guide people to take a look at your issues. Is my point. Sounds good. Okay, that is going to wrap up the Circuit Python weekly meeting for October four, twenty twenty one. A big thanks to everybody who joined us today, and uh, if you're listening in or watching after the fact, we are happy to have you, and we invite you to stop by our Discord at adafru.it slash discord. You can talk 24 hours a day, ask questions in the Help with CircuitPython channel, uh, work with us to improve CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka in CircuitPython Dev, or try out one of our other um, channels. We've got help with projects and 3D printing and live broadcasting and all sorts of stuff. Um, the next meeting is delayed by 24 hours in honor of Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, so we will see you again on, just checking the date, uh, October 12th, 2021 at the usual time. And Let's see, there's a little more that I need to say before closing out the meeting. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of the meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It is featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, the community-run newsletter that you can contribute to. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, which I already covered next week's change, please ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. This will also enable you to speak during the meeting if you want to. And in, at any rate, we all hope to see you next week. And thanks to everybody who joined us today.